<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and back here with another Xbox 360 related video. Here we're going to be revisiting, of all things, DVD playback on the Xbox 360. And I do want to come right off the bat here and say this is going to be for standard DVDs because that's what I can test with. Now, if you're one of those people who you're going to be trying this with HD DVDs, you can certainly give this a shot and I would love to hear a report back on whether this works for HD DVD region unlocking or not, but I can verify here this does work for standard DVD region unlocking. Now I've gotten this question asked quite a bit on the PS3 side of house and I have a video covering this, but essentially the nice thing is with the 360 and the PS3 is that these systems not only are game systems, but they are also multimedia devices. And some people do still want to play their out of region, but even just physical discs and such on their consoles here. So I've had a lot of people ask on the PS3 side of house how they can play out of region DVDs and Blu-rays. And there is ways of doing that and I have a full video covering it. However, I've also had the same question asked with the Xbox 360. Now the nice thing is with the Xbox 360, you can hard mod this system and when you hard mod it, you're able to unlock the region when it comes to games. That means original Xbox and Xbox 360 games from any region will then play on your hard modded system. However, as you can see here, I have a DVD in the drive. For context, this system is a Region 1 compatible system, so it would be for North American territories. And in my DVD drive here, I have a Region 2 DVD that I imported from Europe. Now, if I hit the A button here, the screen will black out. It will launch the DVD player just fine. However, we will get this error here that says, can't play DVD, this disc's region code is incorrect for this console. However, there is a way we can unlock the region on the Xbox 360, and I'll show you all how to do it. First of all, you are going to need a few things. You're of course going to need your Xbox 360 console, and it will need to be hard modded, meaning it needs to have a JTAG mod, a RGH mod of some kind. It needs to have a hard mod, meaning that you can run homebrew, such as what I'm showing right here. Like I can go into dash launch, for example, and I can launch something like this. So you do need a hard modded system. You're also going to need to go through a process of really modifying and flashing the NAND over. So for this, we will also need a USB drive, and we're also going to need our computer to download a few things. Do keep in mind, we are going to be flashing over and updating the NAND on here. So there is always a risk of bricking if you don't know what you're doing here. If you're familiar with updating your NAND, or if you need a video showing how to get your system up to date and everything on the latest NAND dashboard with avatar data, I do have a full video covering that. However, what we're going to do here is still go through that same process. I just won't go into it in as granular detail. But with all that being said, like I said, you will need your hard modded system, you will need a computer, and you will need a USB drive. So let's go ahead and go over to our PC. All right, so for this, we are going to need a USB drive that will be MBR and formatted to FAT32. You can use something such as Rufus for this, where you can just come to all the links for this will be down below in the description, but come to the download section and you can download the portable version. That's really what we need here. I'm also going to have a link to the console mods page for updating your kernel dashboard because it does have a link to simple 360 NAND flasher. You can click here and then download this somewhere you can easily find it. For our NAND updating and modifying, I am going to be using the wonderful JRunner with extras from Octal. Now what you can do is go to the link in the description, go to his page, go to downloads, click on JRunner with extras, and download the latest JRunner with extras zip. Finally, if you need help extracting any of the archives that you've downloaded, mainly the simple 360 NAND flasher archive, you can download something such as 7-zip, install it, and it should help you out for the rest of this video. All right, so we should have three downloads right here. And first of all, let's get everything formatted for our USB drive. As you can see, my USB drive I'm going to be using is this one right here, drive H, and it does need to be FAT32. So once we have this in mind, this is drive letter H. I can minimize this. We're going to open up Rufus. You can say yes to this, and you can allow it to check for updates if you want. Once this comes up here, make sure your USB drive is selected. Make sure non-bootable is selected. MBR is what we need, and FAT32 is what we need here. Keep in mind, once we start this process, it is going to erase all the data that we have on here. So make sure that you've backed up any data that you care about. Now you can click start, hit OK, 
and give it a few seconds. It's then going to quickly format this and it should give us a USB drive that's compatible on the Xbox 360. Once all that's completed, you can close out of here. And if you check your USB drive, you can right click this, go to properties. And as you can see, the file system is FAT32. Now, if you want to as well, you can even just format this again, like right click, format it, and all this is fine, FAT32. That's all okay, quick format. And just do that so you can get rid of the icon right there if you so wish to. But either way, our USB drive is all ready to go. Now we are going to need the simple 360 NAND flasher. For this, you can right click this and extract it out into its own folder. When you have this extracted out, open it up and you should have two files, a readme file and simple360 NAND flasher, the folder itself. You can give this readme file a quick once over and I would recommend giving this a good read right here. Thankfully, it's pretty quick, but I've already used this before, so I know how to utilize it, thankfully. But what you'll need here is just this simple360 NAND flasher folder. Right click this, copy it out, go over to your USB drive, and paste it in the root of your USB drive. Once that's been copied over, we can now right click and eject our USB drive and take it over to our console. Over at the console, you can plug in your USB drive and wait a few seconds for it to initialize. Now, once it all initializes here, as you can see, we can now launch whatever program we need to launch Homebrew. So you can use XEX menu, freestyle, in my case, I'm going to use Aurora's file manager. So you can go over to the file manager here, go over to your USB drive, and open up Simple360 NAND Flasher. I would also recommend here, if you have a DVD in here, like I do, go ahead, give that an eject right now. We don't want any disk in the drive when we're continuing on with this. So I've just gone ahead and removed that. Now, once all that's good, we can go ahead, launch Simple360 NAND Flasher. And as you can see, it should look a little something like this. So we have our CPU key, we have our dashboard information, and just hit the X button, to begin dumping out your flash onto your USB drive. Once all that's been completed, press any button to exit. And once it exits out of Simple360 NAND Flasher, you should be good to continue on. So now let's go ahead, unplug our USB drive, and you can go back over to your PC and plug your USB drive in there. So here we go. Once our USB drive is reconnected, go in here, go into Simple360 NAND Flasher, and you should find the CPU key and flash dump from your system. Go ahead, right click, cut these out of here and we can paste them somewhere safe. So for this, I'm just going to make a new folder and I'll call this update, just something like that. And you can paste everything in here. Next up, we're going to need JRunner with extras. Right click this and extract it into its own folder. Once JRunner with extras is extracted, you can open up this folder and open up the executable. It should look something like this. Now click on load source, find where you've saved your flash dump bin, double click this. And if you've loaded up this console on your computer before, it should automatically decrypt everything. However, if it does not, you will need to go into your CPU key.txt. There's going to be a string of characters there. You need to copy everything out in that CPU key.txt document and paste it into the CPU key text box right here. And once you reload it, it should auto populate everything. So for this, let's go ahead and make the changes that we need. Now, this is where it's going to be important to know what exactly your console has. As you can see, I've dumped this out and I do have a RGH3 CB for my bootloader type. I know for a fact my system is RGH3, but it would be helpful and really needed to know what exactly your system has so you know what you can set everything to. In this case here, I'm going to be using the latest kernel version. I'm going to use Glitch 2, but I also need to enable RGH3. So I make sure that when I flash this new NAND to my system, that it's not going to brick. This is very important here. So once you have that selected and you know what you're going to be setting up, we can now go to NAND, go into SMC Config Editor, and click on Edit Config. Now right here, check this out. You're able to see a lot more information on your configuration itself, but right here, you're going to find this little section for the DVD region. And as you can see, my game region is set to USA, even though that doesn't matter here because I am using a hard modded system and Dash Launch ends up really allowing this to play games from any region. NTSC, the video region, there's really no reason to change this here unless you know what you're doing. But for the DVD region, you can now change this to whatever you want. So since I'm trying to play Region 2 DVDs, I can change this to Region 2. But keep in mind, this will only allow me to play Region 2 DVDs. However, there's also this really cool option here called free, 
which allows you to have a region-free DVD player. So for that, I'm actually just going to be selecting a free. That way, I can still play all my Region 1 DVDs, and I can play DVDs from any other region just fine. Once you've selected your DVD region, click on Save Config and close. Once that configuration has been saved, you can see it says SMC config patch successful. We can now click on create XE build. And at that point, we are all good to go. So you'll want to go into your load source area right here, and you'll want to see where this is saving everything to, because that's where your new flash dump is going to be. I know where it's at, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of JRunner since we don't need JRunner anymore. However, typically within the JRunner with extras folder, it's going to make a new folder right here, which is going to be the serial number for your console. And inside of here, it's going to have your CPU key.txt, your KV info, as well as your update flash.bin or upd flash.bin. So for this here, we can go ahead and just grab everything and just paste it alongside everything else here in the update folder. So there we go. We have CPU key, the old flash dump, the old, old flash dump. This would be the original one. This is the modified one we've made, as well as the KV info and the new flash dump we need to copy over, which is going to be the update flash. So for this, all you need to do is right click and copy out this upd flash.bin. Go back over to your USB drive, go into simple360 NAND flasher, and paste it next to the default.xex file. You can also get rid of this log because we no longer need that, that's the old log. But as you can see, it should look something like this. You'll need your UPD flash right there, that's going to be important. Now with that all being said, we can come back out here, right click, and eject the USB drive, and hit continue if needed. Back over at the console itself, you can plug in your USB drive, and after a few seconds it should initialize. Now we're just going to do the same thing as before. Do keep in mind, however, this does carry a brick risk with it, so make sure you've built your NAND accordingly for your system, you know what you're doing here, and if this system does brick, you will need to hook up a NAND programmer to the system by soldering it, and you will need to restore the original flash dump to it. However, with all of that done and with the risks understood, I'm going to press back, go to the file manager, go over to USB 0, simple 360 NAND flasher, and run the default.xex. Now give us a few options here, and we do want to flash our NAND with raw flash. So you can press the A button, and as long as you are ready to continue and you understand the risks, you can press the start button to flash. It's now going to begin flashing over that UPD flash file from our USB drive onto the internal system memory. And we're wrapping up here, so once it's done, it is going to reboot and just let it do its thing. So as you can see, our system has successfully rebooted, which means that we were able to successfully build and flash over a new NAND to our console. And if you ended up updating your system, you will need to install avatar data here as well, if you've updated from an older dashboard. Again, you can check out my dashboard update and avatar data video for the full breakdown on that. However, what we do care about in this video is the DVD region-free playback. So to test this, I'm going to bring up the guide, Go over to System Settings, say yes, and here we go. We're back at the original dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the tray, and let's close the tray. I just popped in my DVD. Now we just need to wait a few seconds for this to initialize. And here we go. We quickly got Play DVD. So let's go ahead and launch this. It should launch into the DVD player as expected. And I'm here in the disk move around, and there we go. Check this out. Within a few seconds, we didn't get any errors, we didn't get anything else. We now have this playing beautifully on here, and the best part is, if you follow these instructions verbatim, you should have a, not even just a region changed console, you should have a region free DVD player console, which is fantastic. So you don't have to pull out the original Xbox and run the DVD X, I believe that's what it was, the DVD X homebrew right there. And for anybody wondering what this is, this is not the Silent Hill 2 game, this is the uh, bonus DVD that came with the limited edition of Silent Hill 2 that was released overseas. So. Super cool to see overall. As you can see, everything is up and running. It shows the dashboard, but if I press the A button, this is a DVD that's being played right here. So we can skip ahead, or, or not, I guess, or not, and uh, really do all of this right here and navigate through everything. 
As you can see, I'm not going to play anything further on this DVD, but it does work successfully. So there you go, with that simple patch and a NAND flash later, we were able to complete this process and get a region-free DVD player at the same time. I think this is fantastic here and just a way to pull even more usability out of your hard modded system that you might already have. So anyways, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped you all out. Hopefully you all learned something and got to experience something that you haven't used before. And again, for anybody following this who has an HD DVD player, I never owned one of those. So please let me know if this works for HD DVD players. I don't see why it wouldn't, but again, we'll just have to see how this is. Either way, for standard DVDs, it does at least work, and I can verify that. With all that out of the way, that's about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.